my music lovers, this is Cat with Hats and I'm not alone. I'm here today with one of Finland's greatest drummers, <laughs> Kai Hato. Kai Hato. Tonight he's playing uh, here in Munich with Nightwish. And if you think, um, if you think uh, some of his idols uh, are Gene Krupa and Max Roach and Buddy Rich, that's perfectly right. Yeah. Um, he has a jazz soul, but he often also plays metal. Yeah, mostly. Actually, most most of my years I've done metal music, different styles of metal. But I've always loved jazz, and I, I get a lot of inspiration from jazz music. And also, I, I played jazz quite much myself in a Dixieland jazz band and uh, big band and a couple of other ones. So, always been a jazz man, but you know, metal is always been my like my main thing okay do you add some uh, jazz spices into your metal playing i think the, the the best thing that jazz has taught me is like to how to listen and also to to react your ears get much better when you have to play jazz music because and also the coordination part in jazz it's totally different than in, in rock and roll or something like that so it has given me much uh, uh, opportunities to think about music in a different ways mm -hmm. and approach it maybe also so I can maybe put, put some uh, dynamical stuff in there that normally would wouldn't be so obvious mm -hmm. so that's what I like like uh, unfortunately we cannot go to Kai's um, set on stage because um, there's a sound check of the opening band, but we can have a look at uh, Kai's warm-up routine on his um, practice pad. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Let's do that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what do you do for mental warm-up? It's just like, uh, I use a lot of a lot, like visualization things because you, you can just like breathe in and out for five minutes and close your eyes and you know, think about certain feels or certain parts that the, they didn't go so well in the previous show, for instance. Mm -hmm. Because there's always been, you know, there, there will always be parts that are not that easy to play. And because your mind can't really actually separate if it's a real thing or is it's a faked one. Because you, you can actually visual, use the visualization to, to go through those parts and slow them down, certain feels, for instance. Slow them down in your mind and go through them the sticking or whatever it's it's wrong and when you repeat that long enough you, you start to actually get better at it okay. so that's what i use a lot because i think this is the strongest muscle what we need to use in drumming anyway mm -hmm. when we learn something new for instance yeah. that then we just repeat it over and over again until it becomes second nature mm -hmm. you know automatic mm -hmm. but before we can go to that automatic level we need a lot of repetition to certain things so it when it actually comes like that, you don't really have time to think about it anymore so much. So you have to just do it. So um, what do you do for physical warm-up? What do you do on the practice pad? Yeah, um, of course, it's always because you have three different muscle groups you, you need to get warm. Because the problem is when you when you warm up at backstage, if you don't have like a real drum set or, or electronic kit or whatever, it's always that you need to just use one surface or maybe a few pads so you can do some movements. But usually what you only do with the one pad, I always try to get the big muscles first. So you just play, play some single strokes and just like normal stuff before you go to the wrist and then the fingers so you can actually warm up those three parts of your hands. But then what I also do a lot, I just play in the air. So I, I start moving. So you start using these muscles more because when, when you play drums that you don't play like this. Especially this music, it's a lot of, lot of energy, a lot of big movements and the drum set, so, <laughs> drum set is, is huge enough for me to, you know, to go around. So I need to get these muscles also ready for, for working and uh, for working in the real but it's still never the same when you play. Sometimes I even turn them sticks around and do like really simple stuff. Do it. I just like 
different rhythms in a, always keep the, try to keep the time and singles doubles like try to challenge myself you know do different things especially if I take like Austin out of things with my feet like So I just come up with you know new stuff. I don't want to keep the practice routine or warm up routine too similar every time. So I I try to keep my brain also active, and I do do different things. Sometimes I play just like okay, I take double strokes on the right side. So I, I play just on on the right hand and, and feet, and then I play stuff with my left hand against that. Stuff like that. So I try, try to challenge myself, you know, also mentally, not just physically, to be able to keep it more interesting. Because when you do this like 4, 8, 12, 16 per hand, of course it helps. But if you just do it like every night, you get bored. So you have to do something else also to keep your mind active. So sometimes I use actually this Mike Mangini uh, 12 limb pair exercise but I stick with this first six so I start with the single strokes on the right hand and then I replace the left hand with the right foot and I go to left foot then the lead turns to left hand then I replace the right hand with right foot so if you go through the whole exercise it's like six different parts right lead And back to one. So it's, it's really good for you. And also with the feet, I, I, I need to get both motions, like the big motions and also the ankle motion to get loose. So sometimes I just play with my ankles and, and not, not with the big muscles. And then I change. So I'm ready to play everything in, in a real situation. I, so I just don't you know, use my ankles and then when I start playing it's like this. So I need to have these big big muscles as well to, to get ready. So so I try to use mo most of my like like I said wrist fingers and, and big big bigger muscles so big motions and also play in the air different ways of, of thinking like the exercise I've done like yesterday I, I can maybe do it in a different rhythm, maybe in a, in triplets or quintuplets or challenge myself to do different things. Do you ever use a metronome to that? Yeah, usually I, ha I have this app that from uh, uh, Tempo Advance, from, uh, which Mike Mangini actually was uh, involved in developing. Mm -hmm. It's really good, you can put all kind of rhythms, like also like two rhythms against each other, like three and four. Mm -hmm. So you play the three on the right side. and then change four and five sorry <laughs> so stuff like that so I, I try to keep it interesting yeah. and then maybe uh, keep the time with, with one hand like the same exercise with one, two, three. So I started spreading the, the four with between my maybe left hand and right foot. So you actually play double strokes. And it also it, it, it has made me made me to realize uh, also that metronome is, is great to, to that because it made me realize when you play two rhythms it of course it also co comes one sound how does it sound ta -tu -da -tu -ta -tu -ta -du. so you understand it much better mm -hmm. because sometimes you can't teach yourself two rhythms unless you hear it how it goes mm -hmm. and actually it came up with this pretty <laughs> uh, difficult exercise just for challenge myself again so I what I what I do is 
This is just for fun. It's not really musical, actually. It's just like fun exercise to do because I play different things on top of each other. So I st start with 3-4 mm -hmm. with my left hand. Just play quarter notes. Mm -hmm. And right side I play 16th notes. Mm -hmm. But I play on, on divided on three. So you have one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So it's actually triplets, mm -hmm. but it's not. Okay. But then I play eight note triplets with my left hand on top of that. So it... So stuff like that, it's, it's, it's not really musical, but it's just fun to do something, okay. something for yourself to keep your mind also active on the, on the road because you only play maybe half an hour in the sound check and you can't really practice that much because mm -hmm. people don't have time to wait for you to play by yourself like half an hour. Mm -hmm. So we, of course you play together with the band. Okay. But then I try to keep myself, you know, practicing things in the backstage or by myself somewhere I just take my pad and my seat yeah. and you can do different things to keep it keep it more interesting actually okay. yeah cool. okay uh, that's uh, Kai's warm-up routine always interesting always different um, try it yourself maybe it works with you too thank you very much Kai thank you very much thank you all the best cheers check out Kai <laughs>